David here with Figboot on Pens. Uh, today, I'm not exaggerating when I say I have something to show you here that is special, unique, and in my opinion, very, very cool. Uh, and that is the Montegrappa Game of Thrones limited edition pen, which is otherwise known as the Iron Throne. Uh, in the spring of this year, Montegrappa released a line of four Game of Thrones themes pens, which represent the houses of Stark, Targaryen, Lannister, and Baratheon. Uh, and that this limited edition pen is much different than those pens. Drastically different. Uh, now, I will say that this review will be a bit longer than a standard review, but there's a great deal to cover here in regard to the pen and the show, and that I hope you enjoy seeing all of the detail on this intricate design. So, what I'm going to do is go over the parts and features of this pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for, show some measurements, size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, and then stay tuned, because I will be giving this pen away, courtesy of the good folks at Kenro, who generously provided this pen for review. Okay, just kidding. I'm not giving it away. Uh, I just wanted to give Carrie at Kenro a, a bit of a heart attack. So don't worry, Carrie. The pen will be headed back to you safely uh, here shortly. So, but toward the end of the review, I will be taking a look back at the predictions that I made during my review of the initial Game of Thrones pen, uh, heading into this most uh, current season of the show, season seven. Uh, and I'll make a few predictions about what I feel might be coming up in the final season, season eight. Uh, before I begin to discuss the show, I did want to say that any of the opinions or predictions about the show I share are solely my own and not based on any script or production spoilers that I am aware of. Uh, uh, that I will be mentioning events through the end of Season 7, so if you haven't seen the finale yet, you might want to turn back here until you've finished this season. Okay, to begin with, this is the box it arrives in. Uh, there is an outer sleeve that says Montegrappa on it, which slides off. And then inside, we have a box that says Game of Thrones. Uh, and then it has the sigils of House uh, Lannister and Stark and Targaryen and Baratheon. Uh, the lid comes off. Uh, and then inside, we have... The real box and there's a little flap in the front which i like uh, it makes it really handy to be able to remove a large box so i like it when manufacturers do that um, and that this box is i believe it's wood uh, it just has the heft of wood so uh, i'm just assuming that it is and it has a black shiny lacquer finish and again has the house sigils just like the outer box um, inside the box is lined in a velvet-like material. Uh, I've removed the pen here, but it does come with a bottle of Montegrappa red ink, I believe. Um, oh, check this out. Uh, here is, I have it over here. Uh, here is a bottle of uh, standard Montegrappa ink with a black lid and a metal insert, but on the ink that is included um, with this pen, it has a special Game of Thrones cap, which is nice. Uh, and since this is going back to Kenro, I didn't want to uh, open this ink, so that's why the plastic is still on here. Um, the tray, in interior tray lifts out, um, and that underneath here, we have a polishing cloth and then a, a very nice customized uh, use and care guide. Um, it's nice that they include something custom like this. Um, I've seen a number of high-end limited edition pens which have the same generic booklet as any other pens by that company. Um, which So it's nice to have something a little bit customized. Uh, the front is embossed with the sigils from a number of houses. Um, you know, a couple of things I find interesting about it, though, is that in regard to the sigils, uh, if they're not on here an equal number of times. You know, Star that Baratheon is on here five times, but Stark is only on here twice. And then there's other ones that are on here like three and four times. Uh, but what I really found interesting is that on the back, they have a single house sigil. And um, of all of the houses that they could have chose, they chose Tyrell and their house words of growing strong. Um, I just thought that of all the house sigils and words, why, chose Ty why choose Tyrell? Um, as of last season, there was literally only one person left in the house, Lady Olena, and everyone else in the house has been killed off. 
and uh, Olena didn't even make it through this season, so the house is literally completely gone. So not only is it gone, but the uh, Lannisters took their castle and all of their gold. Uh, you know, maybe a, a better choice in my mind would have been to put House Stark with Winter is Coming, which is a little more iconic than the Tyrells. Um, in regard to pens that come in very large boxes like this, um, I, I wish that manufacturers would make these large boxes a little more utilitarian. Uh, and what I mean by that is that for the most part, I keep my pens in other cases. And while this box is very nice, it takes up a lot of space for a single pen. What I'd love to see, well, Okay, like an example in this box, you have this display tray and for the ink and the pen. But on the underside, if you made like five or six slots, then you could turn this tray over and then use the box for storage for a number of pens as opposed to just one. Um, and then even if you have some slots below the tray, then you have yourself a cool, you know, 10 or 12 pen case, which would be a lot more efficient use of space. And rather than having a box that folks maybe take a pen out of and then just set aside, it'd be something that you would have out on display and use on a regular basis. So just an idea. Okay, enough about the box. Let's actually look at a pen. The pen actually comes in this nice uh, Montegrappa pouch. And here is the Montegrappa Game of Thrones Sterling Silver Limited Edition, otherwise known as the Iron Throne. Um, just take a look at this thing. Um, it is pretty amazing. Uh, Montegrappa makes a few other pens that are in this style. Uh, they have the Chaos as well as the Pirate. Uh, and I would consider both of those to be a bit more extreme and over the top. Um, but there's just something a little more elegant about this Game of Thrones model. Well, there's no doubt it's extravagant. Um, I don't feel that it's over the top or gaudy. Um, I think it's a very interesting representation of the books and the show. The pen is made from sterling silver. Now, sterling silver is actually a, comp a compound um, comprised of 92.5% pure silver, and then the other 7.5% is made up of another metal like copper. Um, this is done because silver is rather soft as far as metals are concerned, and so the additional materials serve to make a much sturdier and longer lasting uh, metal. The pen itself is actually created using what's called a lost wax process. Um, it's a complex process, but in the most basic of terms, a mold is made from a model of the pen, and then inside this negative of the mold, uh, negative of the mold is it's kind of brushed with a melted wax to the desired thickness of the final silver. Then the core of the pen is inserted, and then liquid silver is poured into the mold. And what happens is the heat of the silver melts the wax, and then tapes on takes on the shape of the mold. Uh, and the end result is that you can get some incredible detail. Um, let's take a look at that detail by starting with the finial here. Um, on the end is the Game of Thrones logo, which is nestled between the hilts of the swords which make up the cap. I, you know, I really like the, the placement of the logo and think it looks really nice as well. The surrounding swords give the finial the kind of the look of a crown. A and then we have the cap. Now, this thing is just spectacular. Um, the cap is comprised of around 16 swords, uh, each with a different hilt and pommel. Um, the, uh, the hilt is actually the handle of the sword, and then the pommel is the little thing on the end that helps you uh, keep a sword from slipping out of your hand. Uh, kind of like the knob on the end of a baseball bat. Um, each of the swords are unique, and I really love the shading that they've achieved with this sterling silver and the, uh, the lost wax process. Now, I don't believe these are supposed to represent exact swords from the book or show, but there are a couple of pommels which look a lot like Longclaw, the Valerian steel sword of House Mormont, uh, which is currently in the possession of Jon Snow, uh, whose real name, as we discovered during the season finale, is actually Aegon Targaryen. Uh, okay, an aside. I Aegon is a very strange name to have been given to John. Um, John's father, Rhaegar Targaryen, was married to a woman named uh, Elia Martell, and they had a child together named Aegon, uh, who was then subsequently killed by Gregor Clegane, the mountain, as well as Elia was killed as well. Um, and Rhaegar later married Lilian, or, uh, Lyanna Stark. Uh, and they had a child together, which she also named Aegon, so, uh, who was raised to believe his name was Jon Snow. 
So basically, Rhaegar's second wife named their child the same name as a child he had with his first wife. So just a bit strange. Um, okay, here we have the clip, which I really like. It's a sword. Uh, and on the pommel of the sword is uh, a bright red ruby. Uh, the clip is hinged and is very functional. And, and it feels very sturdy as well. Um, at the end of the cap, there's a banner which is engraved with Monte Grappa. And then below that, we have a band which has the maker's mark of the guild which produced the sterling silver. Uh, and then 925, which represents that this is sterling silver, uh, which, like I said earlier, contains 92.5% pure silver. Then we have the barrel. Um, the barrel contains more swords, which are oriented in all different directions. And then in, uh, entwined within those swords are the sigils of 11 different houses, um, some of which are, are more rarely represented when it comes to Game of Thrones merchandise. Um, for example, uh, there is the Falcon of House Aaron, uh, and then there's the Trout of House Tully. I really like how the tail of the trout ducks behind a sword. It's that level of detail that really makes me like the design of this pen. The gold accents on this pen are what's called vermeil, uh, which is silver plated with a thin layer of gold. There's a difference between gold plating and vermeil. Gold plating means that a coat of gold of any purity is covering any metal at any thickness. Um, in order to be considered vermeil, it has to be at least uh, 10 karat gold with a thickness of at least 2.5 microns. Now, a micron is a millionth of a meter. So to put that in perspective, a human hair is about 50 micros wide or microns wide. Um, this is a piston filler. And on the end of the barrel, we have a piston knob, which is made from what Montegrappa calls flaming white celluloid, which is actually kind of black with a bands of pearlescent white mixed in. Um, now, this pen is inked, so I um, uh, won't necessarily twist this as much, but um, it has some interesting mechanics. First of all, when you twist it, it makes kind of a ratcheting noise that you can feel. Uh, you know what? Actually, I took the ink out of here so I can do this. You can hear that. It just kind of has a ratcheting noise. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It actually feels very sturdy. Um, I, you know, I have piston knobs on other expensive pens that feel a bit flimsy, but that's not the case here. Um, it, uh, it also takes more twists than you think it should to operate the piston. Now, uh, it'd be interesting to see inside here to see how it's operating, but it takes about a dozen twists of going twist, 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 in order to operate this piston down and then another dozen or so to move it back up, drawing in the ink. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just an observation. Just most other pistons I have are like five or six twists down. But it does operate nicely. Um, on the end of the piston knob, there is the number of the pen, which, uh, which this one is 32 of 300. The cap twists off and I have to say, this pen has the most satisfying uh, twist cap that I've ever experienced. Um, it, it's extraordinarily smooth. The barrel threads are metal and the cap threads are plastic, but it just glides together. It's like it's greased or something like that. Um, it is very secure. I haven't had the cap come loose at all. I've had snap cap on pens, uh, which are very satisfying, but I've really never had uh, felt anything quite like this. Um, you know, I could spend all day just sitting here playing with these threads, but in order to use this pen, you have to take it off. And underneath is something very special. Just take a look at this nib. It's 18 karat gold, and uh, I'm assuming it's rhodium plated, uh, and on it is stamped with a representation of the Iron Throne. You know, I do like that it's not an, an exact replica of the throne, which may have been more difficult to create on the nib, but I think it looks very cool. Uh, in that I, I like that there's only a slit and it doesn't have a breather hole, just as far as aesthetics go. And that I also really appreciate that the slit perfectly bisects the largest sword in the stone, on, the, on the throne. Um, that would have bugged me tremendously if that split wasn't perfectly even. So to me, it's an indication of the care and level of detail which went into the design and crafting and creation of this pen. On the bottom of the nib, it's stamped with Montegrappa 
18K. And then again, we have the maker's mark of the guild, then 70, uh, 750, which indicates that the nib is 75% gold, which is 18 karat. Um, and we'll see in this in the writing sample, but this nib is very, very nice. Uh, it's very smooth, and I really like the softness of the 18 karat nib. And then here's a look at the ebonite feed. The section is made from the same celluloid as the piston knob, and it transitions into the threads, which are a little bit on the larger side and not sharp at all. Um, then you have another smaller piece of the celluloid, which angles up to the barrel. Uh, this pen is surprisingly comfortable in the hand. With all of the stuff going on here on the barrel, at first I thought it would feel a bit odd in the hand, but while you can indeed feel the texture of the barrel on your hand, um, there's really no sharp edges on the, the barrel, so it does feel nice, it feels pleasant. Um, the cap does post, and even though it does post securely, um, the cap weighs way too much. It really significantly throws off the balance of the pen, so I can't imagine many folks, if anyone, would want to use this pen posted. The Iron Throne pen is limited to 300 fountain pens and 300 roller balls. Now, I admit, this is a bit nitpicky, but in their marketing materials, Montegrappa says the number 300 represents the year of settlement of the last Targaryen king. Uh, but after doing some research, the last Targaryen king, who was Ares II, the Mad King, who was killed by Jaime Lannister, uh, died in the year 286 AC, not 300. So, no, like I said, I didn't know that off the top of my head. I had to do some research for that. Uh, Montegrappa is also producing a gold version of this pen, and for that version, uh, there will be seven fountain pens and seven roller balls, with the number seven representing the seven kingdoms, uh, which I don't need to research in order to know that that is correct. There are indeed seven kingdoms. Well, let's see. Can I name the seven kingdoms? Um, okay. There is the Riverlands, the Westerlands, the North, the Vale, the Stormlands, the Reach, and Dorn. Um, I, you know, I wonder why it's Dorn and not the Dorn, like the other six. Who knows? Um, this Sterling Civil model retails in the U.S. for $4,900, and the gold version sells for just under $59,000. Um, each of the roller balls sell for slightly less than the fountains. Now, when you're talking about extremely expensive pens like this, value is very subjective. Um, this is a high quality writing instrument made with a large amount of precious metal. It's very well crafted. You know, I've really scoured this pen with a loop and, and despite the complexity of the design, I really couldn't find many, if any, design flaw flaws. You know, at this price point, you're really buying something more than a pen. You're buying a possession, a piece of art, a conversation piece. I mean, this is a pen that you would want to show all of your friends, uh, show to all your friends that have read the books or are fans of the show, uh, and that you look on in satisfaction as their jaw just hits the floor. Um, this is not an everyday carry pen, no. Um, but if you are in the market for a pen, uh, for this pen, and um, you know, you're not buying it to use it as an everyday writer. You're buying it for something else. Uh, and people are buying this pen. At the DC show, Kenro brought two of them, and they sold them both. So while the number of consumers out there in the market for a $5,000 pen are small, they are out there. And if you're one of those folks that has the means to afford this pen, I, I would have no qualms about picking it up. The It's a quality piece of equipment. Uh, and while having a pen at this price point in my possession makes me a little bit nervous, uh, I am going to miss it once I send it back because it is a lot of fun to use. Okay, before the season began, during my review of the standard Game of Thrones pen from Montegrappa, I had made three predictions. Um, I thought it would be fun to kind of revisit those predictions to see how I did. Prediction number one was the wall is coming down. Um, the method in which it fell was a little different than I predicted, but it did fall nonetheless. So I'm counting that one as correct. Uh, number two was that Clegane Bowl will happen. Now, um, I'm not counting this as a failure quite yet. The brothers did meet face-to-face -face this season, but the possibility of this happening next season is very strong. Um, I'm counting this one uh, as still plausible. 
And then the third one was that uh, kind of twofold, that Sam will discover the secret of creating a Vener- v- uh, 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 Valerian steel and that Gendry will return. Um, so I'd count this one as another incomplete. While Gendry has returned and Sam is now at Winterfell to help uh, John or Aegon or whatever we're calling him right now, um, I have a feeling that Valerian Steel will come into play very early next season. So partially correct and partially still plausible. Well, um, at least none of my predictions were proven completely false. So what do I expect for this final season? Um, one is I'm doubling down on Clegane Bowl with the Hound coming face to face with his brother and basically telling him that he's coming for him. It will happen, guaranteed, next season. Um, next, number two was John or Aegon um, will ride a dragon. Uh, Daenerys has two dragons remaining. Drogon, who is da- that Daenerys rides, is named after her husband, her husband, called Drogo. Um, her other dragon is Rhaegal, who is named after Rhaegar Targaryen, who, as we know now, is Jon's father. So I feel it's natural for him to be able to ride that dragon. And then finally, number three, I will predict that Jaime will kill Cersei. Um, Each of the prophecies of Maggie the Frog have come true. Um, The only one that is left is that Cersei would be killed by, quote, the Valenquar, which means a younger brother. And she's always believed this to be Tyrion, which is one of the reasons she's been so terrible to him throughout his life. But even though Cersei and Jaime are twins, she was actually born first. So technically, Jaime is also her younger brother. And he does have a history of killing people in power that he feel are, feels are abusing that power. So with Jamie having finally uh, come to uh, the realization that he's had enough of Cersei and he's headed off to fight in the North, it wouldn't surprise me if the next time that he sees his sister that, uh, that she finally does something that pushes him over the edge enough for him to kill her. Uh, there's not an official date set for the next season. It's anticipated it'll be in the spring of 2019, so about an 18-month wait. It'll be a long wait, but hopefully it'll be worth it. And fingers crossed that book six, The Winds of Winter, uh, is potentially released sometime within those 18 months so to uh, tide the fan base over into the next season of the show begins. So a very big thank you goes out to Carrie and Kenro for the loan of this pen. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, And it will be back in the mail to you shortly. So now it's time for some measurements, size comparisons, and then a writing sample. Okay, here we go with some size comparisons for the Montegrappa limited edition Game of Thrones pen. Um, Here it is with uh, an ASC Bologna Extra Arco, which is really one of my favorite pens that I've picked up recently. This thing is just amazing. Uh, Then we have a Classic Pens LB5. uh, And then we have a Pelican M1000. If they all fit on there. Then in regard to some other pens, here it is with a Twisby Diamond 580. Then here it is with a Pilot Metropolitan. Uh, And then here it is with a Lamy All-Star. So here we go with the writing sample for the Montegrappa. Game of Thrones Limited Edition Also known as the Iron Throne This is a medium 18 karat gold nib and it's very smooth and very soft. Uh, I kind of liken it to the uh, the nib on the Pilot 845 I recently reviewed. Both of these are, are very, very soft nibs that I, uh, I like a great deal. 
So when it came to picking an ink, I kind of debated for a while. At first I was going to use some Montegrappa ink since it's a Montegrappa pen, but I, I didn't think that quite felt right that there could be a different match. Um, there was this Conway Stewart King Sand. I thought about using that because uh, Bran at one point was saying that John's name, uh, he's really John Sand, that would make him kind of King Sand. Uh, but that didn't quite work. Then I thought of Diamine Red Dragon to uh, because of the dragons in the show. But then I thought of it. And the exact match for this pen would be Robert Oster. Fire and Ice. which is a perfect match, since this is the Song of Ice and Fire. Um, that uh, This is the bottle it comes in. I, I like the bottles that they come in. Uh, I, I think that it does a, a good job of letting you get virtually any pen in here. Uh, and that this is what the ink looks like. Now, I thought it was kind of strange because I was taking a look at what comparable inks I have, and the only comparables to this that I had were other Robert Oster inks, and so they're kind of almost in the same family. This was the uh, Frankly Blue, which is a, uh, a custom ink that was made for uh, Federalist paper. Uh, and then something that's a, a little more on the blue side as opposed to the blue-green, which is the, uh, uh, the Bondi Blue. Um, but uh, but it's a, but the fire and ice is nice. I like it, and it gets a, a decent amount of sheen on it as well. So here we go with the uh, the rest of the writing sample. And if you notice, you could barely hear that. Um, the, there's very little feedback and very little noise coming out of this nib. Um, that it is extremely soft. Uh, that that was just me holding it wrong there. Um, and you can get a little bit of line variation out of here. Um, but it's a nice medium line. Uh, this is uh, an amazing nib that writes fairly wet. And in regard to reverse writing, that's very smooth as well. I have many pens that don't write that well uh, regular uh, as this one does reversed. And in regard to some fast writing, I'm putting very little pressure on this. Well, a little too not much pressure there. That was only because I was barely holding it on the paper. Um, but the feed has no problems in keeping up. So here we have the Game of Thrones, or the Montegrappa Game of Thrones, the Iron Throne Limited Edition pen. It is truly a stunning pen that I've had a lot of fun playing with. Thanks go out again uh, to Kenro and to Carrie for the loan of this pen. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed watching. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.